What? So, Troll Skull 6, you awaken in a sort of communal, hostile-like space uh, within the Great Lodge of Holbrek. It is a little chilly, but there are plenty of large hearths and braziers and other fires throughout this massive structure. Uh, you can hear the sounds of Norn in the morning as they stir themselves from their deep, deep slumber and start making their breakfasts and prepare themselves for a day of hunting, fighting, exploring, etc., etc. What would you like to do? Oh, wake up. Maybe we go get breakfast. Oh, I dimension door to Birdie's bed. Uh, oh, the code. Sorry. This is unsafe. I think I'm in now. Hacker voice. I see you in here, so you should be good. Oh. It wasn't. I typed it in multiple, multiple times, and just one random time it worked. So I guess it's a crapshoot. So we'll see what happens. Well, no, I told you something different. I said this is not safe before, and it's actually this is. Oh, safe. okay. Okay. Hack the world. You guys are getting out of bed. What are you doing? Getting breakfast. Yeah, let's go get some food. Trying not to freeze. Yeah. On the on the way over, I'll uh. Oh, uh, Brina, Brina, how'd uh, how'd it go? The dream sequence. Yeah. Did we did we talk that over? No, I was asleep. Listen. I thought. Yeah, you fell asleep, and I yeah. put the um, uh, I put the blanket on you, and then I right. put my cold clothes on you. It was really so, funny. So did it did it work? I mean, I know it worked. How did how did it go? Oh, it was super terrifying, and I'm deeply traumatized. Oh, well. <laughs> <I> go great! <right. laughs> Can't wait for that. Oh well, that's an that's uh that's actually not, not great. Yeah, he's like totally, <laughs> ooh, oh, like kind of um. I don't want to say past the point of no return, but it is not good. But the good news is I got to see my sister last night. She was not in the she dream. Was, oh, no. no. She is at the lake. Oh, were you throwing stuff in the lake? Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Like to distress. <laughs> um, but yeah. Throwing it, stuff on the lake because it's, well, it's yeah. <laughs> she tried like really hard <laughs> to break. It didn't work. Yeah, and I got to see my sister, and she's like, um, she's like really religious, but then it's like a good Ooh, thing. Yeah, it is cool. She's cool. I don't know how to describe it, <laughs> um, but yeah. So uh, I will figure it out on the way. We'll be we'll be fine. All right. It'll be a long journey before we even have to talk to the sons. So <laughs> fair enough. Let us go get the breakfast. I think we have pancakes. I think we have pancakes. There are all manner of tasty, heavy breakfast foods in this. Hey, what is the Jiki. traditional Norn breakfast food? Meat. Just yeah. meat. Okay. Yeah. Bacon, eggs. <laughs> yeah. Bit of beef. I was fucking thrilled. Sweet. Yeah, fresh yeah. baked bread. Okay. Peter's just gonna eat bread. Just and she's vegan. Very much like <laughs> Maybe with like a little bit of oh, jam on it. I don't there, know. There is an abundance of cheese. Hey. Most of it is goat or doliac, which are these like large, <laughs> extra hairy oxen type, uh, yeah, kind of like a musk ox. Yeah, thanks for the explanation because I did not know. It, it, <sighs> if you if you think of a musk ox, uh -huh. but like the size of a small elephant uh, wow. like okay. they're, they're they're hefty big boys big boys hmm. yeah i'm gonna pass on the elephant cheese but <laughs> i'm gonna take some elephant cheese well, I, I, goat cheese would be great though yeah little, they've got all sorts of some meat big rinds small rinds slices i think i'll try a little bit of far. everything 
see what we might be able to add back to the menu. Maybe we could have like a non day at the tavern. Hey, we do have to do like go non nights right? on like Thursdays. <laughs> that would be fun. Right, we are kind of dragging our feet. I mean, it's kind of Norn day at every tavern every time it's open. Yeah, but we could do like theme nights. We could have like a certain Wednesdays and Norn that we can work on which days of the week or which, but might bring in even more people. Um. Anyway, so oh, look, the Brotherhood are right over the hill there. I love that this is <laughs> this is just an elaborate marketing strategy for a shitty tavern. Um. Yeah. Okay. What? How should we approach this? Do you think? Well, um, we know where they are, which is Trakil Valsig Vault. Did I get it? Try writing that Close. into a song. Yeah. Close. I think I got it. And we have to Drakken von Stolt. God, that was, that was better. It is a couple day journey. Galatar, mm -hmm. you are here for this, obviously. You know. Of course, I mean, I remember everything. Yeah, this is just fun to recap for fun. You can't, yeah. putting it in the chat isn't going to make right. it better. That's just a bunch of consonants put together. <laughs> right. I don't see any vowels in there. <laughs> Drakken also gulped? Is that what you said? Like I wrote it down correctly. I just didn't know what to say. Wait, say this one more time, Ryan. Draka Valsig Holt. Draka Valsig Holt. Okay. Draka Valsig Holt. Dragon Blessed Hold. That's Sig. Cool. What a spelling. Okay. There's a couple day journey. We stop, we see Thona Icebreaker at Twinspur Haven. She's the captain of the Lion Guard. She gives us more specific direction. Is there anything we need before we go? Because I don't know if you guys have been this far north and it is very cold and it's just going to keep getting cold and horrible. We did get climbing stuff. I think most of us got climbing stuff. Got yeah. Some sort of cold weather gear. Mm -hmm. I also did not watch the recording because I also have had my life be thrown into chaos. Yeah, it, so Salad. you can easily find here some cold weather gear if you would like to have that as long as you remain dry uh it protects you from the effects of extreme cold yes please all right that was 10 gold i believe you're right all right yeah cold weather gear Except for birdie and i uh, brina are there any kinds of creatures or wild things we have to be on the lookout for as we travel here <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, one of them I <laughs> I don't remember the name of, but I bet I will in a minute. <laughs> make uh, make a nature check with advantage because this oh, is your home turf. Baby. Roll. It says the virtual tabletop is not found. I got a sixteen. Ah, uh, is it doing it for us too? I don't know. Well, it seems to be a Chrome issue. It's working for me. Because mine rolls fine, and I, but I use Firefox. Okay, let me, let me... You on my Chrome if it does this. Yeah, mine worked. Yeah, everybody, yeah. test your rolls. Make sure you uh, press the hey D and D Beyond yeah. button. Yeah, at the top, you gotta right. activate the add-in. I got a fourteen on my Earth sixteen. It's cool. on my first roll. Something, whatever. It's a thirteen now. Oh no, sixteen counts. It's fine. You don't have to roll in Foundry. Um, so yes, you you recall that you have you've actually fought some of the creatures with your your companions here that you might True. encounter in the wild, which is the alpine minotaur. Um, True. So dangerously ridden by the uh, the champion of the brine flayer crew. You also, Brina, are champion of the great hunt. You are the slayer of Isormir, and Isormir was a frostworm which are native to the high shipper peaks. Very big, very dangerous creatures. Uh, their eggs are actually highly prized uh, for their, their rarity, both as a delicacy and as components and like magical items and for collectors, people who want to breed them and train them because they are very hard to come by. Uh, with the 16, you, you, you all Norn are familiar with the sort of 
political climate in the mountains, for lack of a better term. Uh, there are other creatures who live here that have sort of structured societies. There are um, humanoid creatures that are, are very primitive and tribal uh, that your people call the Grawl, G-R-A-W-L. Uh, they tend to live in the lower elevations, uh, usually around bodies of water. Um, they're, they're very superstitious and sort of skittish but uh, prone to anger and, and quick to violence when they feel threatened. There are also the Jotun, the large, uh, some, some call them giants. Uh, they're, they're about 12 feet tall-ish, 10 to 12 on average, uh, big and brawny, twice the width of a Norn. Um, they are tribal. And they, they they appear primitive, but the Norn have interacted with them before, and they know that they are not stupid. They, they just don't have advanced technology. Uh, but they are also territorial and dangerous. And there are a variety of other mountain creatures, bears, wolves, yetis, things like that. It is, it is a dangerous and hostile place. Share this information with my compatriots. So is there a particular path we should take on our way to this place that would be safer or should we just go straight? Right, like line? where's the those frost worm nests? We really don't want to get anywhere near something that could be useful for magic. So the thing about the frost worms is you never really know where they are until you're with them, which is a pickle. Um, We'll just keep an eye out. Yeah, do keep an eye out. They're gross. Um, I got swallowed by one. <laughs> Forgot about that. That is for another time. I got swallowed by a... Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Oh. Yeah, it is <laughs> It is fun. Um, I think we take the Orion Road, correct? Just to the outpost. And then we have the off-road. Um, it was about... Talking to White Bear, looking at his map, it was about a two-day trip to the Haven. Okay. That's fine. So, just one night, we'll be all right. Yeah. It's fine. I think yeah, after should. the Haven is when we should be nervous. <clears throat> we all, I guess we have um, Galatar's tent, right? So we don't have to carry tents. All right. Uh, we may Nothing want to could bring, ever go like, wrong with just having a single point of failure. A second yeah. tent, too, in case mine gets, you know, gripped or something. Does anyone oh. else have a Think. second tent? Let me check my bag, and she pulls out her giant Santa sack. <laughs> I should not be allowed. I, I don't know if I can physically carry a tent. <laughs> it would there are 20 pounds. Yeah, I, have, I, I can't. I can't do that. I have two tents. Oh wow, fuck me. <laughs> Wait, no, hang on. <laughs> no, I just have one tent. Could we also put spare tents in the bag of holding? Because like I have a just a regular tent, but also like I'm two pounds short of carrying capacity, so I could put it in the bag of holding. Uh, how long is a tent? Excellent question. Uh, I mean, let me I can go measure go my, my tent. <laughs> there, there I have are... about three feet long probably when they're all folded up yeah although these would... are not tents with poles necessarily like the same way that we have them just canvas and rope yeah probably like yeah, yeah i wouldn't be nylon you wouldn't be able to squeeze the yeah. air out so of you, it like you that you could fudge it a little bit it's more about the weight so we if can you always room... just make an igloo uh i think i have room for a couple of tents so i didn't put that much meat in here there's still some space all right well, There's I appreciate the consideration, over. Carla. Who will take me from breakfast? I can also carry another tent. I do have one. I double check something real quick. No tents do. And tents sleep two people. Yeah. Although I would say Carla and Brina could not share a tent because they're too big. Well, I have my Hello. tent for me. <laughs> the rest of you can figure it out. <laughs> I have the Brina tent. Yeah. Um. 
Do we need to buy a tent? Cool. No, no, no. I think no, we've got like three floating around. There's only six of us. Cool. That that math works. Two Just... times three is six. <laughs> All right. I I will say for uh for Mary and and for Chandler as well. You you can while you're in town if you want you can buy a climbers kit. Um, a couple couple of people have them, so I, I don't know if oh, everybody sure, needs an individual around. one. Uh, but there are also snowshoes and uh, crampons, which are little metal sheets you attach to the bottom of your feet with spikes for walking on ice. It's totally optional. Just putting it out there. They are available. How much does the footwear stuff cost? A set of crampons is two gold. Mm -hmm. And snowshoes are also two gold. OK. Uh, how many tents am I putting in the bag of holding? You can put mine in there if you want. Okay. Brina, are you carrying yours? Yep. I mean, I can put it in your. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Just trying to do math. I can put it in your bag of holding if you'd like. It can be the meat and tent bag. Okay. Sure, I'll give you my. <laughs> I'll hand That's my two. Tent. Who had the third tent? Nobody. I thought Kala had a tent. No. Oh, shit. Okay. We, Kala we just need one sleeps more out in the open. Gotcha. Uh, well, uh, okay. Now, hold on then. Because I feel like not. Alexa and Birdie could could count as one person. I mean, I definitely tent. don't count as a whole person. I count as two people. Ah, oh, dear. If we're snuggling there. <laughs> Snug <laughs> we'll just buy another tent. All right. Yeah, we can what buy. What are we they? Can... Like, just a Probably couple like, gold? Yeah. It's not bad. I don't. I don't know how much this thing costs. Yeah, gold. I'll yeah. buy it. It's two gold. Pizza rolls. How much could it cost? Twenty dollars. <laughs> Do they have any it's a banana, Michael? How much could it cost? <laughs> Do they have any fine silk in Holbrook? Fine silk. I don't think we're a silk gang. Hmm. Never know. Uh, you spent some time looking. Yeah, I mean, if we're just perusing that morning, they're going to get a 10, I'm going to go look for. Yeah. So. so you take some time, look around, and you don't immediately see anything. So you start asking. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, those who are kind of regulars in the, the sort of market commons tell you that right now, they, there are no merchants currently here that have it. There are some that come through from time to time, but today they don't have any. Huh. Should have done that before. Oh, well. What did you need it for? Just out of curiosity. I was going to make a, well, I was going to have commissioned a second tent made out of a hundred gold pieces of fine silk so that if somebody broke our first tent, we just had a second one ready to go. A rich and people tent. <laughs> it's cool shit. Uh, okay. Well, that's right. everything I had. We got cold weather gear. We got climbing gear. We got tents. Yep. Would they have any potions per chance? Any, any merchant carrying some, you know, like a healing potion if they got any, some some spooky shit thrown around? Last chance. Let's see. Holbrack, Holbrack, Holbrack. Let me get my notes up here. <laughs> make a, make a, persuasion check for me as you're shopping around. Can I, can I have an advantage because I'm the fucking champion or something? I'll give you advantage as the slayer of Isormir. Sure, since you're among the Norn. Okay, okay. that's That good. advantage was needed! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, you uh, you ask around. There there aren't many. Norn here tend to doctor their wounds with with bandages, healing kits, first aid stuff, uh, salves, things like that. Uh, but you are kind of directed. 
away from the Great Lodge to the east. You, you're you kind of led off the, uh, the sort of Market Commons deck that extends out from the lodge and kind of overlooks this bowl-shaped depression that the, the steading is in. And off to the east, along the ridge line, there are small clusters of like residential buildings, uh, little steads with between like five and 10 Norn in each one, it's usually large family groups or, or things like that. And you are, after two or three people kind of stopping along the way, directed to what, what looks like a very, very small hovel. Uh, it, it's it's Murder. just very, like, it doesn't look like most, most Norn buildings are pretty tall because of the nature of your people. And they're all sort of crescent shaped, kind of coming to almost like a, like a curled horn at each side. We, we described it last session as like a crescent roll is kind of what the buildings are shaped like with the door right smack in the middle. This is very much a sort of crude stone and mortar hut with like a thatched roof. It's, it's very atypical of Norn architecture. Uh, and as you approach it, you can smell like a, a thick, smoky, sulfury smell. Uh, and as you walk up, there's no door. Uh, and you can just just barely make out inside. There's like a low fire, and it looks like a a heavy iron cauldron, kind of bubbling away. And there's sitting at a table next to that, just beside a sort of long counter that runs down one side, is a grizzled old Norn woman who turns up to look at you as your shadow kind of darkens her doorway and says, uh, "You're in my light, dearie." Sorry, and I scoot to the side. They like. What can yeah. Gerta do for you today? Hey, Gerta. Um, do you happen to have any healing potions or other potions or like cool stuff? She snaps her head over towards you, and you can see she has this loose mane of, of pitch dark hair, but her skin is very, very pale. Her side of her face is covered with tiny scars, much like White Bear, uh, like a life, a life of combat. Uh, and looking at you now with her face turned in your direction, you can see her left eye is covered uh, with a sort of leather patch, like a dark leather patch. She leans forward and says, Yes, I have many potions, many, many mixtures I mix myself here, but why would I sell them to you, child? Who are you to come beg boons of Gerta One Eye? Gerta One Eye. Um, I, no begging involved, more just like money for your goods and services. And also, you know, I, I don't want to brag, but I am. I am the Slayer of Sormir, which is pretty cool. Um, she shoots up out of her chair it's like with a speed that's startling for her wizened speed. old form. And she kind of shuffles across the, the floor to you. It's, it's an odd, almost serpentine movement. You can see she's got this heavy, black feathered cloak draped over her shoulders. It kind of drags the ground behind her with a heavy feather pluff kind of mantle over the shoulders, pulled tight around her. She comes over to you, her kind of unkempt black hair dangling over her face. She grabs you by the wrist. She's okay. just looking at you, just never breaking eye contact. She starts to pull your hand up toward her face. Okay. Sure. She looks down, turns your hand over and looks at your palm, <laughs> gives it a smell. Runs her Sorry. hand over yours. Hopefully a little stinky. Uh, I didn't wash my hands after breakfast. What? Make a persuasion check. <laughs> but I am so little. It's a three. <laughs> it's a three. She's going to put a curse on me in my household. Rina has mm -hmm. never washed her hands. <laughs> It's like it smells like ass. <laughs> she gives you a long once over. I really want to be your friend too. And then a little chuckle <laughs> spits on the floor. 
200 gold child. For one healing potion? For you. For me? In this I economy? I do not sell my wares to anyone who comes in here, hunter or no. So then why do you make them? She leans forward and she rises up. You realize that she's been hunched over. But, but she <laughs> is, in fact, not taller than you, but of a height. And she looks you, her one eye, into yours and says, I am the maker child. I craft my wares for the worthy. And then she kind of sinks back down and she goes down to about like chest height. She loses like a good foot, foot and a half in this hunch. But she turns around and very slowly, the same kind of like rocking serpentine motion makes her way back over to the shelf, very quickly withdraws uh, a little wooden box, plops it down, creaks it open, pulls out two healing potions, sets them down. And she just so, looks at you with her one eye. Is it like 200 for the pair or well, shouldn't you rest? Individually, child. Individually. I have no concept of money. This is good She's for not... Gerta. I Gerta, I'm sure it is great for you. <laughs> Come back when you have a few more winters under your belt, and we'll talk. Oh, what a... All right, I dropped 400 gold pieces on her. She very quickly her, pick him up and leave. Snatches it up, and it's obscured underneath this sort of raven or crow feather mantle she's wearing hands them both to you, kind of almost shoves them into your hands, and then just starts like pushing you towards the door. Just just like waving her hands, like shoo, shoo, in this motion. Before I leave though, can I give them a good sniff and are these actually healing potions? With my limited knowledge, although I have consumed a couple, she's yeah. just tell me red. No, they, 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 from, from what you're holding in your hands, they seem to be. Alright. Yeah. And if you want, like when, when you get outside, because she is actively shooing you, you can just like dip your pinky and taste it and confirm. They're legit. And just say, I'll be back, Gerta. I came to collect. <laughs> I look forward to it, child. When your legend has grown. And she turns back into the house. As she does, that black feather mantle starts to face you, and it's, she almost goes invisible. It's so dark inside this little hovel. God damn. These yeah. are just fucking two regular healing potions. <laughs> It's good. Okay, well, Gerta will be a fun new recurring character in my nightmares. Um, <laughs> fuck it, reball. I'll hold on to my two regular, regular healing potions, right? Mm -hmm. They sure are. Mm. Tasty. That's that was my day. Yeah, sure. I mean, what else are you gotta spend money on? That's the thing is, Brina doesn't buy anything. She finds seashells and throws shit in the river. She's a simple says, woman. Says, says the girl who brought a Santa Claus sack full of knickknacks on. <laughs> Those are collector's <laughs> items. What you hear? They're action figures. <laughs> when, <laughs> they're action figures. Um, yeah, I'll walk back to, I guess, outside the Great Lodge where we're meeting and be like, don't worry, guys, I got some healing potions just in case we need them. Got them for a steal. Totally don't ask about Greta. Okay. I think we right. have, like, three, but, uh, yeah. We could I think we're terrified of the journey. Yeah, I think I've got some, too. We also have a lot of healing magic between us, but that's that's fine. Yeah, um, I don't have any concept of money, and I'm deeply terrified of the <laughs> huh. journey ahead. So this should be. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be great. Hang on to them, Brina. Um, yeah, those are yours. <laughs> yeah, you got them. Yeah, fuck Always you guys. Always good to support the local economy. So. Fuck, fuck you guys. These are my. I appreciated it. Yeah. I have to return when my legend is good or something. Well, how about after we kick your brother's ass? That should be good, right? I don't know if anything will be good enough for Gerta, but you know what? 
we can start there. All right. Um, I'd like to run and say goodbye to my parents before we leave, because I'd like to still leave when it's the morning time. We don't have to RP it or anything. But just... the, the morning is wearing away. But yeah, you can swing up and say goodbye. I do. OK. Yeah, we'll, we'll not role play. We'll just say you, you go up privately, say goodbyes. They wish you well. Um, your mother gives you like a like a firm, not stoic, but like a like a very supportive uh, holding of the hands and tells you, you know, she she wishes you the best. She doesn't know what to do exactly, but she she hopes the spirits will guide you as you kind of turn to make your way out. Your your father kind of tracks you for a couple of paces out uh, and then turns you around, stoops down and gives you the big old bear hug. Uh, and just says, I hope whatever happens, you will both be all right. And he steps back and kind of like pats you on the head a little bit. It's big bear paw of a guy. You can see like, so little little man tear forming. It's not quite fallen. A little little quiver in the lip. I will be back. Or better, like, or worse. Like forty feet away, you like you're just kind of entering this sort of common area, and you hear this shout from behind you. I'm proud of you, baby bear. <laughs> <laughs> just gotta do this number again. <laughs> Papa. Mm -hmm. Okay, gang, let us get on the road before it gets dark, ideally. Good idea. What time does it normally get dark? About how many hours would we be able to travel? That is a great question. You, you can travel a full day. You can travel eight hours. As I mean, it, it'll get dark, let's see, at this time of year. In the mountains, it'll probably start getting dark about 6.30 or 7.00. And I'd say at this point it's it's probably like ten oh, okay. in the morning. Yeah, you got, you got plenty of time. Okay. Cool. Well, let's go. All right. Into the woods. Is there like any sort of I don't know creature that we can ride on? I feel like this is going to be very horrible for me. You all getting like tauntauns or something up here? Do we I have any top bear if you want to ride on my back, Alexa? Not yet. Or well, I appreciate the offer. Or something. No, I, I didn't necessarily mean for you to do it, but I appreciate the offer and maybe it'll come to that. I will say, um, you know, I Alexa. I get taller than you, Alexa, so uh, just let us know. No, it's immovable. Damn it, I still don't. I could also okay. ritual summon that white force for you if you'd like to uh, use it. There, there are stables in this town. You know, you, you can rent uh, horses. Or, uh, I mean, you you could theoretically rent Doliax or or ox or you I know. mean, oh yeah, Le Alexa, let's go rent us a a, do yeah, a Doliax. Yeah, let's do it. We're, we're, I'm I'm not walking. No, it takes um, sixteen hours to get there. Oh, yeah, this so is Pandora's box. I'm glad I opened. Let's go. I say rent. I mean buy. Yes, they're not going to well, rent you. Good a, sir. A good sir. I go to the stable. Good sir. I would like to buy. Your largest animal for my friend and I here. Oh, back to my notes real quick. Jesus. <laughs> Just whichever one's bigger. Your finest yak, sir. Yeah, straight to the table, please. A well-behaved one, though. My friend and I are small. We need a very tame creature. You, you see this, uh, this very... All Norn are very large. This is a big pot-bellied guy long white hair he comes walking out he's got like um uh, almost like a blacksmith's uh uh smock on like a thick leather uh uh what are the things you wear when you cook in the kitchen apron, apron. apron. like a, like a thick leather apron on uh and he walks with a slight limp uh, but as you as you're shouting this towards him you know he turns around and sees you well 
It's not often we see such tiny people in the high mountains. Indeed, tiny people who have a long journey and would prefer not to walk it on foot. Of course, of course. You want big animal. I think that would be appropriate. Biggest. Don't, don't yes. biggest. She yes. says biggest, so. I mean, we have Dolyak. That will be fine. A, a nice one. Dol a calm yeah. one. All right. Uh, hey, come, come with me. I'm Gunnar Snowman. Pleasure. Gunnar Snowman. Bertie the Bard, I'm sure you've heard of me, but it is a pleasure to make oh. your acquaintance. Hmm. Well. Pleasure is mine. You are Skald. I am Skald, yes, yes. Ah, place of honor in Holbrek for the singers of tales. I, that, is, that is refreshing. I, I'll tell you, down south, we don't get that kind of respect. Well. The Philistines on the coast have no sense of culture, or so I'm told. Uh, well, um, I I don't know. I think I think it's just different. It's just it's different. different, yeah. You know, the pirates—they are different kind of people. Mm. Uh, you don't yes. judge their ancestors. Well, let me introduce you to Daisy. Daisy girl. Daisy. Come, come, oh, Daisy. And he goes over to this massive stall, and you see there's a hulking yak creature with these big curled horns coming forward. A long face is almost like a cross between like a donkey and a goat, uh, but it is it is enormous and broad. And it's it, like it's not the size of a big bull elephant or anything. It's like Asian elephants are smaller, and this would be like like a young adolescent. Like it's not a calf, but it's it's sort of a okay. mid tier. Yeah, yeah it's, it is a it is a large creature. Uh, Perfect. But it's huge, shaggy fur just like hangs down to the ground, uh, and he goes and grabs a a saddle and kind of sets it on the fence uh, at the front of this this gate to this this enormous stall. And that the stink coming out of these stables is pretty potent, mm -hmm. uh, even in the cold air. I probably have like an ascot just like up to my face. He goes over and starts to to kind of brush down the nose of the creature. She says this, this daisy. I've raised her since she was tiny calf. Her mama full of fire. Oh. Well, we, how, how much would it cost to to, uh, to purchase daisy, as for, it were? For a trained doliac, mm. would be 400 gold. Sold. It's about the same price as two healing potions. <laughs> <laughs> he reaches down and like... <laughs> grabs your hand to shake it to confirm the deal and it's just like he envelops your hand your wrist and part of your forearm see alexa do you have some cash um, I, I, I actually yes. i mean I, yeah, I, <laughs> I, i'll do 200 yes uh, yes I got, does I daisy mean, look like platinum. a good animal like are they being sold like a, a decent are, are you there with them yeah i'm definitely gonna go okay. watch birdie try to buy an animal <laughs> <laughs> Make, uh, make a nature yeah. check for me. All right. I'm going to watch Birdie try to buy an animal. Oh, uh, what was this? 20 platinum? That's right. 23. It looks well fed. The coat has been well groomed. The saddle looks of good, solid make. Yeah, this is a good creature. All right. Yeah, I give him 20 platinum for mine. Yeah, I do, I do the same. All right. Hey. Gonna have to stop by the bank soon. <laughs> Wouldn't want to be. I, I I prefer. I don't know about you, Alexa. I prefer play, paying retail. Uh, I I think it's yeah. just just easy. You easy. Don't have to worry. It's easy. You don't have to worry about anything. It's just <laughs> cut and dry. One and done. I go to the dealership and I pay what's on the sticker. That's all I need to know. You know. <laughs> so Daisy is gonna die though, right? Which I'm not excited oh. about. <laughs> I'm not, not a, not not a, kill a, no, Yeah, not if I have anything to say about it. Hey, go for it, Brina. This yeah. animal is going to last this entire journey from there and back. I mean, like there some sort of... Uh, then, yeah. well, this isn't in character. Brina wholeheartedly believes Daisy's going to make it and outlive all of us. Yeah. <laughs> There's a fair chance she's going to die. Right. The first <laughs> encounter we come upon. <laughs> it's getting thrashed. What, what does them. Daisy eat? That's a question. Yeah. This Idiot. time of year, do we need like food for her or? Daisy can carry her own food, surely. Absolutely. I have bags of oats and grains you could take. She can also browse, though in the high places, browsing is pretty scarce. 
We'll take where, a couple bags in the rain. Where will you be taking her, out of curiosity? Uh, we are going to kill the sons of... Um, Svanir. Svanir, sons yes. Of Svanir. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. He kind of like pulls Daisy's head in close and strokes her like <laughs> tenderly. You take Daisy into battle? Well, not directly well, in the battle. Not no. a war mount. We understand no, that. No. But even the great, the greatest of legends, as any oh. scald, as any scald will tell you, sir, so, <laughs> the greatest of legends are forged with a little risk, and every hero needs a, a sturdy mount. Kind of turns and leans into her. Make a perception check for me. Perception to see if you overhear what he whispers to the oh my god. Zodiac. 18 21. Okay, yeah, you, you guys both catch. Uh, he, he turns and kind of pulls her head in a little bit, nuzzles up right up against her. And says, You be careful, don't take foolish risk. Oh. Papa loves you <laughs> very well. I throw in. Two bags of oats, no charge. Guys, if he fucking how, how he long does a bag of oats minutes. last her? Twenty Three, minutes. Four days. Oh, Twenty. perfect. That's gonna be fine. She's gonna be fine. Bird. Have to get there. He opens the gate, saddles her up. Uh, this, just in case it becomes relevant, I'm not sure if it will. Uh, we will use the statistics block of a rhinoceros. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that sounds oh, like fine. a little hefty, at least. Um. So, how tall? How tall is Daisy? Relevant question. Uh, at her shoulder, her her head kind of dips down lower, but the the shoulder joint, we'll say, tops out, uh, about seven feet. Okay, perfect. So, uh, Alexa, if you just if you just hop step into my hands here, I'll give you a boost, and then you help pull me up when you get up there. Oh. That's a grand idea, Bertie. Maybe we can pull her over by the fence and use the fence to, to kind Kala, of hop up onto yeah. her. Mind. Do, do you guys need some help? Maybe. Can you, can no, you... yeah. Kala, let them try uh, it. Let them try uh, it. <laughs> Gunnar just kind of like chuckles a little bit and says, You take on sons of funny. It's a funny joke. And he grabs you by the scruff, Bertie, <laughs> and Alexa. It just like picks both of you up and puts you on top. I, I give him a, I give him like a little like kiss and I, I do use prestidigitation and there's just like a little puff of glitter that comes oh, out of my hand. I definitely give him a big wink. Yeah. I'm like, thank you. you <laughs> Gunnar is your name? Gunnar. Well, it was a pleasure. We will take good care of Daisy for you. You'd better or I kill you. Ha 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 And he smacks it on the ass and it bolts out of the stable. I'd like both of you to make animal handling checks. Yes. <laughs> oh, mine's yes. a one. Nine. <laughs> Ella, you, you don't know. Need that. As this Doliac tears ass out of this stable. The rest of you kind of like coming to join at this point. You guys see this enormous <laughs> seven foot high at the shoulder shaggy car burst out of the stable and just start careening down the slope out of town daisy Colin, daisy down girl down girl daisy. standing in the doorway laughing that went better than i expected <laughs> i'll chase after them <laughs> after a few seconds. With, with your speed you are yeah. you are able to catch up it, it takes a couple of minutes but mm. uh eventually you are all caught back up <laughs> Alexa and Bertie looking a little windswept, uh, kind of <laughs> wild-eyed. Oh, you guys made their friend. Yeah, this is Daisy. Daisy. She'll be coming along. She's a fast runner. Mm. <clears throat> I'm just going to reach up and take the reins and just like pull her behind me. Oh, thank God. I hate, <laughs> I hate doing that kind I of thing. It's, gonna be it's like a pony okay. at a kid's birthday party. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> I, I will say, as, as you're traveling... Uh, or as you're as you're kind of moving now, you're out in the sun. She's been for a little bit of a run. She definitely smells like yak. <laughs> yeah. Let's start prestidigitating around us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll do a little tag team. We'll do a little prestidigitate, <laughs> clean her off. Clean her off. Lavender, <laughs> lavender, lemon scent. Yeah, that's a fucking like, hand trip. Like the the lounge singer Willie at Temple of Doom. She's riding on the elephant, like sprinkling perfume on it. Yes. 
you guys have never seen it, you should. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> so is there anything anyone wants to do in town before you guys leave? No, but while they were off acquiring Daisy, Galatar would have pulled out his ritual book and gone ahead and summoned Cheval just to make it a little easier for the first hour. Okay. All right. Oh. Is gonna turn into uh, a weasel. <laughs> okay. We had you. Uh, we had you be a snowy owl last time because I figured it was appropriate for the weather. Okay, Kitri was gonna turn into a weasel and scurry up Brina and like nestle into like her hood or something. Uh, get a little, little fur scarf now. Yes. Yeah. Hey buddy. I give you a whistle. Weasel tree. Maybe. He. Parrot tree. Kiesel. Oh, I like, I like that. Yes. <laughs> okay. So. All right, let's kick it. You are you are now out in the open, sweeping winds of the high shiver peaks. Leaving Holbrack, the Lion Road winds its way down the mountainside, descending sharply at some points through steep, narrow gorges. Uh, eventually, after a couple of hours, they, they open into a wide valley, not dissimilar to the, the Ohio Valley, uh, like if you're, if you're looking out a bridge like down river, but there's no river, uh, and the, the hills on either side are much taller. They're, they're not so much hills as they are snow-capped mountain peaks, and you are in a, a high valley between these. Uh, you continue your descent, uneventful. Uh, every now and then you pass some travelers, usually uh, Doliac driven carts that are making their way to Holbrek, uh, some loaded with goods, some loaded with people. Uh, most have uh, barrels of ale or grain or, or some kind of textile in them. After about a half a day's travel, you notice that the cold no longer bites through your clothes and the, the air itself no longer burns your lungs as you breathe. By day's end, you find yourself descended from the high places and entering a heavily snow-laden forest. You can hear the distant sound of trickling water, and you find very frequently along the side of the road clusters of small animal tracks, birds and rabbits and deer. A welcome change from the sort of naked stone and the endless wind uh, of the heights from which you came. Just in the distance, kind of in the center of the valley looking northward, you can just make out two spires of rock kind of jutting towards each other, forming a kind of loose triangle. And your first day of travel is ended. Easily enough on the side of the Lion Road, you find a place to make camp. Not a big deal. It's uh, several places where you can see caravans and other travelers have stopped pretty frequently, used fire pits that are ringed with stone, kind of leveled out uh, with, with river stone and, and uh, different things to make, make accommodations a little, a little easier. Uh, no need even really to set a watch this close to Holbrack. So if there's anything that anyone would like to do this first night as you sit within, I assume, uh, Galatar's pavilion around the, the warmth and the comfort, kind of warming yourselves up from the trip, now would be the time. If not, that's fine. Uh, do you set a watch? Yeah. The... yeah. What the... watch do we want to take for our watch? I'll take the first watch. I can go second. I can take the third then. Okay. Every, everybody who's on watch. <laughs> yeah. How many watches are there? Four. Also, do we need to like keep an okay, extra? Okay, I'll take the last one. Eye on yeah. Daisy. Is, no. Is oh, she's gonna really be well. Fine. Like, do the yak have like natural predators that would be around here that no, we watch out for? No. She's like a rhinoceros. She's, she's gonna be strong. fine. She's gonna I'm be sure fine. She will. She and is. she'll tell us if something's wrong. Sure. She's, she's very she's actually kind of creature. I'll sit outside of the 
tent with Daisy during my watch, and I want to ritual cast, speak with animals, and oh see what she's God. thinking about. That's Whoa. right, motherfucker. <laughs> okay. That's right. Bet your ass. Where do you get that from? Is that an item? It's a. Uh, or no, it's your class. Isn't that like one of it's your. Like a, it's like a class oh, thing. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. It is the spirit seeker. Okay. To yeah, like. Shit, now I gotta look up a spell. I have this horn of silent alarm, which is kind of like a, a daisy whistle when you think about it. Because <laughs> uh, only, only one creature can hear it. Uh, okay, so I can drop it in the foundry. Could be. Maybe I can't. Is there not like a... Oh. If you click on the spell, there should be a thing. Yeah, if you... Like display. I think I'll up, it down. Up, by the, up by the spell name yes, on the little thing. Yes, I think that he got it down. got nervous and scary. Oh, hmm. Your locations. I think I'll put it in there just for fun. Hmm. Okay. There it is. The rhino stat block. Yeah, that's my motherfuckers. I have a spell. It's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. You think? Sure oh, does. So as, as you Something. find yourself sitting in the silence, uh, a little bit of snow begins to fall, and it just highlights the fact that there's no sound. Oh. Uh, every now and then, you you do hear like a, a snapping of a branch or a, a a slight crash from far away as the snow uh, weighs down these these alpine firs and other conifer trees. But you sit there for a moment, kind of. Just, just running your fingers through her hair and, and making sure she's all right, uh, checking the, the saddle and stuff, making sure she's at ease. She's crunching away on oats. Not a girl. You, you ritually cast this spell. What do you say? Hi, Daisy. <laughs> what is up? Um, thanks for coming with us on this journey. Hopefully you're having fun so far. Do you like any snacks specifically? What do you uh, think about? <laughs> oh God. Very, very slowly, like masticating these oats. Berries. What? Berries good. Yeah. That is true. I like berries too. I'll be on the lookout. Cool. So is that really like all that you think about or is like the world different from your point of view? Or do you have any life lessons you can impart upon me while we're here? Rest when it's dark. I was going to dunk on you, but honestly, that one was really good. That was pretty tight. Just like give her, away. <laughs> I give her a little pat on the head and we'll get you back to Gunnar, ideally. He's a good man. Gunnar, nice. OK. Cool. You just let me know if you need anything within the next uh, nine minutes and 30 seconds or so. Just tap like on Four minutes go by and you just hear, I'm done eating. <laughs> you go over and disconnect the bag from their mouth. I'm done. Like, a, like a feed bag, you know, for horses oh. and stuff. If you have to poop, you're going to have to do that to yourself because, like, you're a grown yak. Already taken care of. I <laughs> see. Right next to you. Like, just, just on the other side of the tree, there's a little steam coming up from the snow. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I continue my watch. I don't even think I rolled perception. It doesn't matter. It's a one because I'm just... Hanging out with my friend, the yak. It's a nine. Mm -hmm. Everything is good. It's all I gotta good. remember, like, scrolling back through all this stuff is crazy. So, first night passes, and nothing out of the ordinary happens. It, each of you on your watches. 
catches subtle sounds kind of drifting in from the outside. You can kind of stick your head out, look around, and you can you can hear the soft crunching of snow, but it's distant. Um, never really gets any closer. Do any of you, during your watch, decide to leave the camp area to investigate this? No, but I would send Ibu to do so. <laughs> we need to make perception checks. Uh, yeah. Every anyone who's taking a watch, go ahead and roll perception if you haven't already. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, minus one. Wow, so bad. Look it up. Come on. Damn. You very perceptive people. So yeah. I heard about my role is I rolled one more than Kala and she beat me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Expertise, man. Rogues are crazy. Oh. Yeah, so you, you, you all notice this. E each of you kind of in turn uh, at, at different points. Um, Galatar, when you send Ibu, uh, he, he has to fly off a ways. It's, it's about two or three hundred feet away, but the sound in this space is sort of echoing off the trees and in the stillness of the night. I would send him in the direction with the simple instructions to scout um, and then return. And using his his very quiet owl flight, he sort of soars up into a branch. And as you take a moment to kind of close your perception off and, and see through his eyes, uh, you see uh, a s small herd of Dolyaks that are just kind of tromping slowly, uh, Kill them. scavenging for berries, kind of like nipping at, at what little greenery is found around here. Okay. They're just, just very quiet. They kind of move away from you. Gotcha. Aside from that, nothing happens. You all wake after having a long rest. Uh, you find Daisy is sort of quietly standing, leaned up against a tree. Very, very low snore coming out of her. Yeah, it's a quiet morning in a snow-laden wood. All right, rise and shine, kiddos. Day two, let's do this. But it's cold outside. You are always all shut up. <laughs> Get in here. <laughs> Get in here. <laughs> You were a weasel. You can edit this up. Just picks up an untransformed teacher. Get in here! Transform! Don't worry, Keetri, and just sit on my shoulders. It's time to rest the day. Weasel, though. Oh, yeah. Weasel time. It's weasel time. Weasel time. As you all pack up your camp and head back out onto the Lion Road, looking back the way you came, you can kind of see the the rising peaks uh, going up into the distance and some of the, the sort of narrow gorges that the road had wound down. Um, you can't quite make out Holbrecht, but you can see about where it's located. As you turn back towards the road as it bends northward, uh, you can see again those, those twin peaks that you're looking for. Uh, you begin to make your way down the road. You, you encounter fewer people this early in the morning. Um, a couple hours go by, the sun now cresting over the mountains, about 9.30, 10 in the morning. Uh, you pass what looks like a wide uh, snow-covered meadow. It's, it's got about four or five inches of snow, but you can see like the remnants of, of greenery uh, and what looks like maybe hay or, or like a, a tall grass uh, kind of sloughed over in the snow. And about 200 feet to the east, there is a low wooden fence. Uh, it's about four feet high, but it's it's just posts with, with long wooden planks running horizontally between them. It's not like a sturdy um, uh, barricade, you know, like a small, you, all, all of you could just walk right through it. But you see uh, just beyond that, a couple hundred feet further in, uh, there are several dozen grazing 
stole the axe. And further behind them, uh, in the distance, at the edge of the sort of snow-covered wood, you can just make out the familiar shape of a Norn homestead. Its hearth uh, appears to be active, producing a thick sort of plume of smoke rising from its chimney, caught in the morning light. It's kind of glowing a whitish color. Your road continues northward. Uh, if any of you would care to stop, you may. Otherwise, we'll continue. Do we want to go say hi? Would I mean, are we like kind of in a hurry? Or? I don't know. I mean, Brina seemed to really like to talk to her people. I didn't know if this was someone she knew, maybe. So cool. Do you think all Norn know each other? Do you seem to know everyone when we were just there? Yes, I, I do think that. We do. It is cool. Um, actually, is this anywhere close to the Long Winter Stead that burned down? I'm really hyper fixated on this fucking poor ass village. This is not. Okay. I just wave. Hello. Okay. Look, guys, we're, we, if you want to come and say hi to the yak, we can, but. You guys stand there for a second, and then you hear, hello. <laughs> and you see, like, s sitting atop one of these doll yaks, kind of cross-legged. It's almost impossible to see until they moved. There looks to be a young Norn girl who is now, like, standing up and waving and just says hello and then sits back down. Hello. But they make some glitter go. Go make her day. Uh, I will. I will uh, use prestidigitation to shoot a couple like little little sparks, gl glitter sparks, into the air. Okay. Just like a little. You, you see her like. You want to give her a business card? Bro? Eagerly, kind of stand up, and then she jumps and, and claps her hands a little bit on top of this doll yak. Mm. Thank you, thank you, Daisy. Give a bow, would you please? Uh, she, she doesn't do like anything. Still, yeah. yeah. <laughs> good girl. Good girl. There's down. This. Daisy, she's a, she's I'll try showman. to get her to um, like go down on her knees for a second. Make an animal handling check. God, I hope this goes. It'll be a high DC. Throws his bow saw. Come on. Ah, oh. oh, nice, nice, nice. Not awful. As Kala is standing in front of her with the nice. reins in hand, she pats her her knee, says, "Down, Daisy." You see it. It takes a, a moment, but Daisy turns her head and then starts to bend her knees down a little bit, kind of touches her nose to the ground just briefly. You know, we kind of give up. a bow as she does it and come back up with her. Wow. Give a wave over to this this young Norn. Circus yeah. people already. She's <laughs> clapping enthusiastically, and then she turns around and sort of slides off the back of the Dolyak down into, you see, like a poomp and a poomph of snow as she hits the ground. Uh, and then she starts running back towards the house, just kind of like happily. <laughs> Dad's coming with the gun. <laughs> we gotta go, guys. Oh, fuck, fuck. This has never ended well for me, guys. We gotta go. <laughs> Last time I impressed a girl. You guys continue on? Yeah. I mean, yeah. We... yeah. As well. You continue so you to make your way north. I, I will say, do you think these people might have any information about the Sons of Svania? I mean, I know they're a day away, but maybe I mean, they know from, anything. We can ask. I, from what I understand, that is, they've been um, kind of assholes to the right. community as a whole. They might have some personal involvement, but I don't really care about that. Uh, I was hoping more well, for like. Are these are some of the sons of Spanier here? Ooh. So um, we are a day away from the outpost. From the outpost, right, we have right. many more moons. Well, I don't Let's know, just keep many. going. They are probably just farm people. Well, I feel like if we don't stop, her parents are going to think she lied about the magic Dolyak. I don't know. Daisy is not magic. Let's be perfectly clear. She's this magical. So magic. She's magical, I guess, but uh, not not inherently magic. Mm. Uh, so I kind of feel bad because I don't want to make that girl a liar. We might have to, I, I want to, do y'all want to at least go say hi? We can say hello. Fine. 
paralyze the party with indecision. Paralyze them. Give you options. Uh, sure, Corporina. This is sort of like your you know, expedition. Do you want to stop? Uh, let us, well, we can poke our head in and say hi if we, this is, oh man, but what if the DM put something crazy in there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I say, I say we should at least say hi. I would, I would, I would hate for her to get in trouble or something. Um. <laughs> Let us go say hello. At the very least, we say we can buy some Doliac food from them as a gesture of hospitality. Ask a couple questions about what they know about the sons. Make friends. Uh, you have a lovely story to tell. Come on. And I'll just oh. walk on up to their homestead, I guess. Okay. What are you doing with Daisy? Because this, this field in front of you is enclosed in a wooden fence. Fuck. <laughs> Can she not just walk over it? Is it like no, too it, high? No, it, it, it is. Okay. It's about four feet high. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I I would hate to use dimension door on both of us. <laughs> that seems a bit excessive for this. Well, what are we really gonna do later today, Brady? <laughs> yeah, Brady. Okay. Can just go to bed later? Yeah, but you have to do it twice. Can you do it twice? Fuck yeah, I can do it twice. Um, I'm so nervous about this being pointless, but the amount of dumb shit we've done. But I, I, I think well, maybe if we, just, Dora. if we just tie her off to the fence. Yeah, uh, that should be fine. Yeah. Hey, Katri, can you tell Daisy to stay right here until we come back? Because she's got a bit of an attitude. Don't, don't tell her I said that, though. I think Do we're I getting somewhere. somehow speak Dolyak? Can I communicate with this other animal? Do you have a spell that lets you do that? <laughs> let me tell you right now, but I don't think so. I can ritual pass if we want to hang out for 10 minutes. I'm just going to tie Daisy to the fence, we can give her just the put, yeah. bag, and just right. yeah. stay. She's, stay here. she's not like... I mean, she's tied up. I don't yeah. know where she's going to go. I don't know. She's a rambunctious girl, but you're right. Is let's she? Just go. I mean, is she really? last night. how do you know this, Brina? We just she... had her. She's totally normal for... All the other Dolyaks I've seen. Just saying, you don't know. You tie her her reins and and tack onto the to the fence near at hand, and you see she, she kind of like turns and gives you a sidelong look. Uh, each exhalation, big clouds of steamy, hot air coming out of nostrils, and she just sort of shakes a little bit and starts moving the snow around with her snout eventually finding a little patch of this sort of tall grass that's kind of obscured underneath it and just starts chomping away. Nice. Yeah, let's go see. At, at this point, Kala and Kitri, with your passive perception, you can now see coming around one side of the Dolyak herd that's a couple hundred feet off, uh, there is a large, muscular Norn man uh, holding... Uh, one, she, he's holding the hand of a, a young Norn girl who's to be I don't know, probably about eight years old. Uh, and in his other hand is a long wooden haft and a single-sided, like a woodcutter's axe of Sorry. significant proportion. I'm sort of casually slung over one side and he's kind of looking and you see him turn and say something to the little girl and she gestures excitedly. He's like jumping up and down and pointing at you. And he sort of just starts to trudge kind of slowly in your direction. I wave at him. No, I have to say hello. Yeah, I give hello. him a big double hand wave. Yeah. And we're like, do we need anything? <laughs> no. See him kind of like <laughs> give you a, an appraising look, and he just nods, keeps walking it's very slowly. He's not not in any, any hurry. Uh, it takes him a, a couple of minutes to close the distance, uh, and you can see the girl is like pulling at him, trying to get closer to you all and he is firmly holding on to her uh, eventually they do make it within about 60 feet and he stops he does not get closer uh, and he just says good morning travelers what can I do for you we're just passing through we, we wanted to say hello uh, we, we didn't actually know if there was anyone here so when we got a hello and reply we we're a little surprised. Yes. Do you know anything about the sons of Svanir? 
his face kind of goes stern, sterner. Uh, he reaches down and grabs the girl under one arm and like picks her up and is like holding her against him now. It's like it's an eight year old girl, but he's just like hefted her and is now just holding her and she's kind of like resting on one of his shoulders watching you all. He lets the axe slide down and kind of leans on it almost like a cane, the, the head uh, lying firmly against the earth. And he says, All here know of the sons. They are a threat to this valley. The lion guard from the haven up the road do their best to keep them at bay. What's your business with them? We are going to look for them, actually, and try and uh, put an end to it. We're on a mission from Holbrack. White the Bear himself is asking us to uh, scope them out. Hopefully take it the problem off your hands. You see the, the, the girl kind of start bouncing in his arms uh, and she just says, You see, you see, I told you, Papa. They're heroes. They're going to fight. They're magical. And he's shush now, shush. You go sure. to fight the sons. Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah. For a strange looking group. We get that a lot. Great compliment, yes. Thank you. That is a handsome Doliak you have. Yes, her name's Daisy. Lovely. You see the girls like, oh yeah, that's such a pretty name. <laughs> Where did you get her? Uh, Gunnar. I, I don't recall his last name, but Gunnar in town. Mm. No main. Gunnar no main. <laughs> uh, I know Snow main. He told oh, me Snow everything main. I know about raising them. Oh, so every, everybody does kind of know everybody. <laughs> A good man. And if he saw fit to let you take one of his prized calves then i suppose that's good enough for me they rolled really high on persuasion i didn't have to roll persuasion i'm naturally persuasive actually what is uh, the name of your homestead this is yakbinderstead <laughs> yeah that makes sense i am gareth this is signy my daughter Have you all had... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, my bad, Garrett. The... Is there anything you need? Two things. One, have you had any direct encounters with the sons? None that yet live. Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, good answer. Good sort of on you. Pops up a little bit. Good shit. They come um, to harass my Doliex from time to time. Have you seen any of the ones that don't look entirely human? The ice brood. Hey. Not so far south. They tend to stay in the high places. Yeah. Okay. Um, second question. Do you have any berries? Sure. Can I have some for this? It's our favorite. Oh, they do like a delicious treat from time to time. Signy, run fetch basket of berries. Oh, she Signy. puts her down in the snow and it's like about halfway up to, well, I guess not halfway up to her knees because Norn children are pretty big. It's like ankle deep for her. Uh, and she says, oh, Papa, do I have to go on? Grab the basket. Faster come back, faster you see again. Go. He kind of swats her on the back a little bit. She She's making her way back home. He takes a couple of steps closer. He gets bit, what, about 30 feet. He's still kind of keeping his distance, but he just plants the axe on the ground in front of him, puts both hands on the haft, and just kind of regards you all for a little bit. It says, My wife, Henna, she has seen the ice brood. 
She says they are fierce fighters, very strong. You must be cautious. Da, we, we plan to. Um, is a um, bit of a sticky situation, but, you know. Mm. They have made a move called threatening the Great Lodge, and huh. we, yeah. <laughs> Really? I said, yeah. They grow very bold. They think they can take the lodge from us. Every Norn within 50 miles would come to defend it. I agree, but um, the ice brood or something else. And hmm, frankly, I am not a fan of any of it. We'll say that. Any of it. They say the blessing of the dragon is a potent gift. I've not seen them myself, but Henna... They've given her a difficult time. And that's saying something. She's a fierce woman. And you see, he kind of like looks off into the sky for a moment. Um, don't say too much. Brina here will get a... <laughs> Get roused. Party impolite. <laughs> Sorry, that was weird. <laughs> Anyone specific in the suns or when did this happen? She encounters them from time to time. She and her companions. Every now and then they get the wanderlust. They go explore, they adventure. Hmm. I believe this time they are trying to find an old shrine to Owl further to the north and west, but I don't know. She <laughs> should be back by the end of this month. We will keep a lookout for her. Don't know if we'll encounter her, but I mean, you know, small mountain. Not really, but sometimes. If you bump into her and, and her party, just give her Gareth's love. We will. And seek these. And Jaffe, my son, he's inside. Jaffe. And about this time, completely out of breath, rosy cheeked, puffing clouds of steam, uh, Signe makes her way back and she has a little, about the size of a bandana, kind of wrapped up and full of uh, thick blackberries. I love her. He just grabs it from her. Thank you, little one. I uh, sort of make sure the knot's tied real good, just tosses it over the fence to you. I um, fish in my giant Santa bag and pull out another one of the seashells that I have and kind of crouch down to hand it to Sigby if she wants it. She starts to take a step forward and stops, looks up at her papa, he doesn't really look down at her, but his eyes go down. Gives a quiet nod. She's real excited. She runs over and reaches through the fence, grabs it from you and holds it up, starts looking at it like she doesn't quite know what it is. It's from very far away, down south, where the people are shorter. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Take what care of your family. She turns around and runs shows it to him and he picks it up. Ah. Interesting. This is, this is from the great water to the south. It goes on for miles and miles all the way to the horizon, but you cannot drink it. It's very salty. And her daughter's just wide-eyed. Have you seen it, Papa? No, but your mother has. She'd tell you about it when she comes home. And kind of pulls one arm around her and pulls her in, tussles her hair a bit. Well, thank you for stopping. I've got some wood I need to finish cutting. Be safe it's on your travels. We can let you know if we hear from Hannah, was it? Hannah. Yes. H-E-N-N-A. Oh. Definitely let you know if we run into her. Much appreciated. Be safe. 
Thank you for the berries. He turns around and starts stalking away. About 50 feet, Signy kind of stops and turns around. And she waves, seashell still in hand, and then just kind of like jogs back to her dolly axe. While she's still looking back, I elbow Birdie. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll do the fireworks because it looks like Birdie's busy at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give her a fireworks send off, press a digitation. Everybody oh, gets cool. one. I'm not, I'm not a fucking, I don't fart fireworks over here. Birthday. It's true, I kind of do, but. Just get through it. Right, it's, it's easy to do, Birdie. She just sort of, mid jump, she sort of like lets herself fall back down into the snow and starts making snow angels. Oh. I love this child. <laughs> All right. This place will be burned to the ground when we come back. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be gone. <laughs> Last time you ever see him, Brina. Yeah. I'm going to kill Daisy guys. with my bare hands. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Continue. Why would you do that? On the lion road. I feed Daisy some berries. It's great. They're poisonous. She, she dies. snuffs them out of your hand. Like, really gets up in that shit. She is clearly very happy. <laughs> Muzzle just stained with blackberry juice. Nice, buddy. <laughs> You continue on, and, and as you make your way north, these two rocky crags that just sort of jut out of the ground towards each other start to kind of coalesce and, and get more and more detailed and larger as you approach. Eventually, you find that uh, you are approaching a small stone fort that is kind of nestled between these two. It's actually a single rocky peak that kind of juts out of the center of this valley, and the the road rises up onto it, and there is a, a small stone fortress right in the middle, these two pointy crags on either side. Uh, the gate is currently closed, and as you get within about 50 feet of it, you can see that there are a couple of people up uh, on the parapet looking over, uh, lighted torches on either, either side now that the sun is kind of westering behind the hills, not quite set, but it is getting a little dim. And one of them just leans over towards you and says, Welcome to Twinspur Haven. Uh, what brings you here, travelers? We're, we're here on order of, of White Bear. Uh, we're going okay. we're gonna to kill the sons of Svanir, basically. Stop leading with that. We, got, we, uh -huh. we don't have a lot of good airs about that. It's just we're facts. We're looking for Tholna Icebreaker. On the orders of White Bear, yes, they weren't wrong about the, that. A man one. that uh, hailed you initially, the second guard, uh, now as she, as she speaks, you can identify her as a female, says, ah, very well. Uh, you'll find lodging and fire inside, uh, just across the yard on the right. Open the gate. <laughs> and you hear the heavy clanking of chains as this big set of, of iron-bound wooden double doors starts creaking open slowly and you, you see that the, the sort of archway that this is set into is only about 10 feet high like for for norn like they can walk under it but it's it's shorter than a lot of their architecture this is very clearly kind of human inspired uh, but as you pass through the walls are like 10 feet thick they're very stout stone walls and the doors themselves are at least like three feet of wood and iron uh, uh, to the yeah. to the group as we as we walk in, I, Bertie goes like, "Wait, are we playing this Sons of Svania thing close to the chest? I thought that would buy us some points out here. I no, thought, like I, none of these people like them, right? No, nobody likes them. It just seems All like right. a pretty vague mission. <laughs> people just I mean, think it's we're seems... full of shit. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, yeah, well, like, but... yeah. I mean, that's what we're gonna kind of what we're gonna. I mean, they don't have to believe us. We we believe they don't have in ourselves. To believe us, yeah." If we project cons confidence, if we, we can be our own boss, you know? Plus we got no, Daisy. No, keep going. Daisy got us good street cred with the farmer. That That's true. true. That's true. I just think that White Bear's name will get us a bit farther than Svanir's. I, at I, least now. We didn't drop White Bear's name at the last place. I think we did. Yeah. Just look at Kala, <laughs> like, <laughs> probably. Backed up. <laughs> As you pass underneath this archway through the gate, uh, you see a, a kind of wide courtyard 
uh, stables set off to the left. Uh, in the in the back on the right, uh, there is a, a sort of high stone tower that overlooks most of this yard, and there are a couple other smaller buildings uh, kind of scattered about the edges. The the center seems to be a, a pretty wide thoroughfare uh, with a well right in the middle. Uh, and as you enter, you you hear people talking, people walking, the the clank of steel as people with swords and crossbows and shields are kind of making their way around in their chain mail. You can see on your left and right uh, on either side of this gate there are a couple of people exchanging words and it looks like you've probably just entered at the changing of the guard. Uh, shift change is happening. A couple of people start to walk off towards a a wooden structure separate from the fortress walls that is well lit within. It looks like some sort of inn or, or tavern of some sort, like a resting place. Uh, perhaps just a mess hall, you're not quite sure. Uh, Kala and Kitri, with your ridiculous passive perception, you notice that on top of the high tower, looking down over this courtyard, is a tall female Norn. She's, she's a little thinner in profile. Most Norn tend to be very broad in shape, um, but she is of a of a height to be a norm, long blonde hair sort of flowing in the breeze, a high plumed helmet with a nose guard kind of sitting down over her face. Arms crossed, she just watches you as you cross the courtyard. One lion guard comes over and uh, you recognize the voice that greeted you from the, the high wall and just says, Welcome again to Twinsper Haven. Uh, if you like, I could uh, take your Doliak to the stable, put her up for the evening. I trust you will be staying. Uh, that would be yeah, that, that'd be great. Excellent. I'm Skarda. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hello, Skarda. <laughs> Hello, Skarda. <laughs> and who might you be? We? Uh, 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 we? We had the Troll Skull Six. I'm surprised you haven't heard of us. Uh, the Troll Skull Six. Would you like our <clears throat> our card in case you ever need to uh, hero services? Uh, oh, we'll give them the mouth to anybody. He takes it out of your hand and looks at it. Oh, very official. Mm, mm. I should hope so. <laughs> he sort like of reach up and tucks it into his chainmail. Like picking Alexa and birdie up. <laughs> Thanks down. <laughs> down. Did you get it? Thank you, Carla. I appreciate I'll, it. I'll break a leg if I jump off this thing. <laughs> he takes the reins and sort of gives the, the Doliak a scritch behind the ears. This is a very handsome animal. Thank you. Thank She's you. Her name's Daisy. Daisy. Uh, a yeah. Lovely name. She'll be very well cared for. We have we have fine stable hands here to take care of all the lion guard mounts. Mm. If you'd care to have a seat in the mess hall, you could find places to sleep. We have bunks available for travelers. Something hot to eat, something cold to drink. Mm. I'll let the captain know you're here. Please do. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Garda. Starts pulling Daisy away. For a moment, the Doliak sort of like hesitates a little bit and kind of like turns to kind of regard all of you. I'll give her a little pat and tell her, go. Starts trudging on after him. She's perfect. We're taking Daisy home through the Asura gate. Oh my god. There's going to be pieces. zoning laws against that. <laughs> it's like an invasive species. <laughs> In Inspector Keel's going to be so happy when we bring her back. Ellen! Oh my fucking god. So now that the, the Doliak makes its way away from you, you can see that there there is what appears to be uh, a, a general building a mess hall uh, that is sort of a tower. Uh, there are a couple of what may be bunk houses, um, some storage areas, and you can now hear the tapping ding, 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 ding of a blacksmith. Uh, coming from one corner, you can kind of smell the the, the, the scent of, of burning coals and that sort of sulfurous smell as, as iron gets smelted. It's the faint fire glow and a thick plume of smoke coming out of a, 
a thatched roof with a large hole in the center, kind of over by the far gate to the north. What would you like to do? Suppose we go wait in the mess hall. Yeah, Bertie will, Bertie will pull out his pan flute and, uh, you know, tune. <laughs> play, a, play a little little tune as we wait. Okay. Kind of get that wrap up as a as a treasured member of the Norn community, Mr. Yeah. Bard. Scald. <sighs> yeah. As you guys enter, uh, you see that there are just a series of like five or six really long wooden rectangular tables. They're, they're a little thinner uh, uh, from one side to another than, than you're used to. They're, they're very long and they're laid end to end in like three or four rows, these extra long tables that fill most of the floor of this area. There is a sort of side section or, or add on ad, ad, addition to the building uh, and f issuing from that you can smell uh, the telltale signs of, of a kitchen, uh, cook pots, ovens, or smell of roasting meat and baked bread. You see that a great many of the seats, uh, which are all benches, there are no chairs with backs in them, but sitting along these tables there's a variety of humans, Norn, uh, couple of char, a couple of Azura, two Silvari, uh, many, many Norn. There are probably like 20 Norn sitting in this room. And they're all in a, like one, one stage or another of undress. Uh, like they're all wearing lion guard, like chain mail and like thick yellow leather overcoats. And they've started taking off a lot of this or gauntlets are on the table. Their swords are propped up against the benches. It seems these folks just got off their shift and they're coming in here to, to relax a little bit. Oh, the Norns are down to party. They do look pretty nice in uniform. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of stand getting your bearings. Uh, One way of putting it. I would say <laughs> probably, probably Brina. You feel a, a hard kind of clap on the back of one of your shoulders. As you turn, there is a, a tall female guard uh, who's standing by, and you recognize her voice as she speaks as the female who was on uh, the top of the wall over the gate. Oh, hello. She says, <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to Twinsper Haven. Would you like something to eat and drink? That would be great. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. It's a long journey, I'm sure. You, you say you came from Holbrek. Yes. Yes, mm. from Holbrook. Lion's Guard. It's a very Lions entertaining Star. trip, but uh, it we certainly works some... up an appetite. Yeah, we saw some Doliak. It was pleasant. I'm Yrsa. I'll go get some food and I'll bring it to the table. Thank you. Roll a D10 for hot for Yrsa, please. <laughs> Four. 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 Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. Everybody Not authoritative enough for the... <laughs> yeah, very, very kind, very You're just going to get my food for me? I don't have to not be fed. <laughs> not, not like, not rip, <sighs> like what you expect from a, a person who does Jeez. a lot of mountain hiking and exploration. It seems like maybe maybe the Lion Guard life got her a little soft. Cushy. She's not saying, fuck you, get your own food. <laughs> yeah. No. no. Brina has a low self-esteem. Anyways, what I was saying, <laughs> I'm kidding. We yeah. sit and wait for food. You see, as you guys make take your seats, you see several of these Lion Guard kind of turn and raise their glasses to you and give you a, a nod of acknowledgement. Most of them are engrossed in conversation, talking amongst themselves, but Ooh, Birdie, you start playing like your... Is there any Norn guy that looks like he's... Maybe on the lower end of the totem pole. An eligible bachelor. <laughs> I didn't the, say that. The, these all look like kind of rank and file lion guard. N none but, of them are, appear to be wearing officer. Well, but outfit. I mean, like, are, is, you know, anyone like you know, kind of like the newbie treatment? Is there anyone that gets getting shit on? You know, the butt of all the jokes or no? Not really, no. All right. Yeah. All right. Hazing is yeah, not exactly. tolerated in the lion guard. So <laughs> bullying is not tolerated. Zero tolerance policy. Or do you break out your pipes? Yeah, I'd, I'd start doing, you, you know, that, that, that kind of thing bards do when they get into a place. So, you know, find a find the edge of a table, kind of sit up on the table, start doing a little play, you know, 
maybe a couple of people want to talk to him, you know, exchange stories or something. Uh, nothing, nothing like formal, but uh, just, just past time. More of an open house situation. Yeah. Open mic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so here's Wonderwall. Uh, <laughs> I don't really play guitar or anything, so apologies. <laughs> yeah, you, you see that most of the people in here, are like, a, as you play, they they kind of turn, they listen for a minute, they nod, go back to their conversations. It's not your your <laughs> style is is not really the the Norn of the Mountain. Yeah, stable, no, no, no. But they respect the the song singer. The singer of tales, and it, it's only just you know four or five minutes before uh, Irsa comes back with a big like tea tray just piled with meats and f uh, not fruits but like like cold weather fruits like apples, um, like stone fruit. Yeah. Like a plum. Yeah. Is that yeah, anything? Yeah, some some cherries and like big big round loaves of fresh baked bread that are just like crispy on the outside and cottony fluffy on the inside it smells amazing um oh, big like slabs of pork or what looks like pork chicken turkey like big big uh drumsticks and wings that have been drizzled in, in what looks like some kind of like a maple syrupy concoction or something it's, it smells pretty kick ass. i'm dying uh, she comes and sets that down. And it's it's enough food for all of you plus some. Uh, and then she says, "If you'll uh, just wait a moment, uh, we'll have drinks brought out as well, or help yourself. Just uh, try not to choke." <laughs> and she grabs like a drumstick and just starts chowing down. This is a bougie fucking lion guard outpost. <laughs> God damn. It seems like it. Through a mouthful of food. We like to take good care of our lion guard here. Mm. Good. We're, works up appetite. Boost morale. It's good stuff. Uh, eventually, like uh, a couple of people in just canvas clothing, uh, you know, some, some greasy aprons come out with another tea serving sized tray just mugs like there's more mugs than there are you but they're they're like big like 22 ounce mugs all foaming over the tops and they just set them down Ugh. Ugh. If you need anything else just let me know and you're so just salutes compared to the rest of the dinner are we getting better treatment as you look around the, the tables are pretty well piled which is okay fruit yeah. I was like, is this like a weird thing or are we all just like real happy to be here at Twins yeah, Parade? It's, it's shift change in a really cold outpost. Right. Respect. There, Respect. There's not a lot of stuff to keep the morale up here, so this yeah. is what they do. A lot of good food will help. Right on. Yeah, I'm going to take one of those maple-y turkey legs. Yeah, I will absolutely fuck up some of this. Yeah, so it's it's definitely shout out. enormous. It's It's like... I, I can't even think of how like a size comparison. Like the the drumstick side of this is like as big as a cantaloupe. Is it like, like an ostrich leg or something? It's very much. She, she, and she says as you pick it up, she's mmm. Uh, excuse me. It's very very good. This this is moa. Oh. Well roasted. Mm. We get we get shipments every now and then. Uh, we saved a merchant from a Svani raid. He gave us two casks of this glaze very very delicious oh. must try yeah this is really good mm. Paula like crunches the bone up too and eats it <laughs> no nice. uh, and after just a couple of minutes of eating and, and drinking in relative quiet uh, as Bertie kind of plays a little accompaniment and every now and, now and then I assume get something to eat uh, a couple minutes pass and the door to this place opens and there is now that you're inside in the warmth and maybe shed a layer or two as the door opens there is a bitter cold wind that sweeps in the candle lights on the nearby tables kind of flicker a little uh there is a big warm hearth fire burning uh but very quickly the door is closed and standing in front of it is a tall norn woman clad in half plate armor uh, a high helm 
steel nose guard and, and just coming underneath her eyes, uh, this helmet, long blonde hair kind of tussled over one shoulder from the wind, a, uh, a wicked looking weapon holstered on one side of her belt. It's got a, a haft about two and a half feet long, a thick black chain, which leads to uh, what looks like the head of a, what would be a flanged mace. And it's all just sort of bound up together, sitting on one side. She very quickly kind of surveys the room, spots you and nods, and you see uh, Yirsa at your table stand up very crisply uh, in, a, in a sort of attention stance. The rest of the Lion Guard don't really move, uh, but as this person approaches you, Yirsa says, Ah, Captain, I was just entertaining these new travelers. These are the ones Skarda told you about. The captain approaches your table quietly, doesn't say anything, just gives you all a slow, appraising look. Looks to your son. It's all right, thank you. Continue your meal. You do not need to roll a d10. Just for the for the record. <laughs> she reaches up and removes her helmet. Oh no, good or bad. You can see that she has a, she has a single braid that it's it's kind of like a cornrow from the top of her left temple, like all the way back over her head, back to the back, and then draping behind her. She kind of shakes her hair loose, gathers it, and flips it out behind her, kind of getting it out of her armor holding her helmet with a high plume, like a feather plume on it, under one arm. Looks at all of you and says, Good evening. I am Thulna Icebreaker, captain of the Lion Guard at Winsper Haven. I'm told that you were sent here by White Bear, and that you'll be taking the fight to the sons of Svanir. Is this true? A statement regarding the D10 stands. Yes, this is correct. We are the uh, Trollskull Six, heroes of Lion's Arch and beyond. Is that correct? Trollskull Six. Here's our card in case you uh, need a memory jar. He's got our, our uh, CV on the back. Um, Takes it. at it seems confused turns it over i don't think there's anything on the back is there no no <laughs> <laughs> she looks even more confused and then you see her like drop it into her helmet in case you ever need to get a hold of us you uh, may be more familiar with our friend brina's title around here uh, i forget what that was but something of the great hunt oh <laughs> you participated in the great hunt i am um... You, yeah, I was the champion of the Great Hunt, but ah, I have a so Sormir, it's cool, it's cool, no big deal. <laughs> Just... It was you that killed Sormir. That was well done. Thank you. Thank you. It is very gross inside of an ice worm. I imagine so. I've never had that pleasure, fortunately. <laughs> hmm. Don't want to. But, um, I'm told it took seven Norn to capture Isormir and bring him captive back to Holbrek. It took many more to put him down. I just got lucky at the end. But, uh, yeah. Luck and skill are not so different from one another. And you see she just like turns her gaze back towards the kitchen and then turns back to you and takes a seat at the head of your section of table, sets her helmet off to one side and crosses her arms. So, you are taking the fight to the sands. Yes. Where is it you plan on doing this? Uh, White Bear said you could provide us more specific directions to, oh, all right, hang on, I wrote it down phonetically. Uh, Dracus Volsigold. Dracus Volsigold. Hollowed land of the dragon or something. 
You're looking for Svanir's dome. Hey. Hmm. This is easily recognizable. It's a mountain peak shaped like a half sphere, half dome. Very easily visible from far away. It's in a region we call the Frostfells, the, the frozen hills. But don't let the name fool you. In order to get to the hills, you must first pass between the hammer and the anvil. Mm. You must break from the Lion Road to the north of here. When it branches east and west, you continue north. If you step outside, you can just see in the daylight two high peaks to the north. These are the hammer and an anvil. And she kind of looks at the rest of you. Brina, you, you actually know these two peaks. You've seen them before from a great distance. And she says to the rest of you, uh, for clarity's sake, that our people passed through these peaks on our journey here when Jormag drove us from our homelands to the north. They claimed many lives. The high pass between is a dangerous place. Beyond the pass, you will find the Rosenfels, a range of snow-covered hills full of wolves, yeti, and worse. Svanir's dome is on the far side of those hills, but you can't miss it. Okay, Lion's Road goes east and west, we go north. Just head over to the Hammer Anvil, bada bing, bada boom, frozen fells for at the dome. Walk in the park. So believe. You will be leaving the comforts and the protection of the Lion Road. It would take my scouts two or three days to make the journey in ideal conditions. But more than likely, it will take... Hmm, four or more for your group, as you've no real experience in this kind of environment, I assume. Um, I have experience. You've been through the high passes of the Shiver Peaks. I've been through some of the Shiver Peaks. Lived here a few years. Then your experience will do you well. It is a treacherous place. If there's anything I can do to help you, I'm happy to do so. We are somewhat short on supplies, but for food and drink, which we are sure to keep stock of. The local Norn are very kindly to us as we protect their caravans. Is there anything you need? I think information was all we really wanted. Uh, I think we're probably out of Dolyak feed. Yeah. Um, we can secure some feed for your animal, of course. Is it it's, wise to take the Doliac with us further past this point? It would be difficult. When you get to the high places, the, there are no paths. It's very <laughs> steep and treacherous. It could be dangerous. There are wild Doliac who live in those hills, but... Are you familiar with Gunner as well? Gunner. Dickfinder. I know no many Norn named Gunnar. Gunnar Snowmane. Oh, yeah. Sells Doliak in a uh, Holbrack. Not that I know of, no. Told you we don't all know each other, Barty. <laughs> Two degrees of separation. Sure. Well, I mean, if you don't think it would be good wise to take her, could we leave her here? Of course, we would be happy to look after her. It could be dangerous for you to take her with you. Uh, the larger creatures like this tend to attract the biggest and most Whoa. dangerous predators. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe we should take her, you know, just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alexa, always joking. Good debate. Quite a trap for a frostworm or a thunderbird. 
with a dolly egg such as those that. eggs I'm... you know maybe on the way back we we bake this underbird how about no, if any nests i would about the frost worms since you bring it up uh, we want to steer clear of course yeah i do not okay and very fortunately i would not want to tangle with a frost worm my lion guard are strong but many of them have let this sedentary lifestyle get to them she says a little <laughs> bit too loudly and you see like a couple of people quiet down and kind of look sheepishly at her and push their plates away <laughs> wing falls out of the mouth <laughs> you're uh, like sitting at the opposite end of you guys and she just sort of <clears throat> like chokes on her beer a little bit i think that's enough for me for a night i'll uh, head back to my quarters very well you she sort of like she's a little half grin and you can see like she didn't mean it in cruel jest but uh Yrsa excuses herself a couple other norn and humans kind of like push their way from the table and start to make their way away jim's gonna be busy tomorrow hmm. captain icebreaker how did you encounter how did you determine that the sons were Thing in Svanir's dome. And I guess what can we expect when we get to the dome itself? Well, I did not determine that that's where they were. Although my scouts have seen them from afar entering the stronghold there. Svanir's dome is an old structure. It's a, it's a series of caves that were used for shelter in the, the distant past when our people were traveling and probably before. Um, I believe at some point the Jotun used it as a, a place of strength. But when our cultures collided and the Norn people came south, we drove many of the Jotun away. I have never been within myself but i'm told that at the base of the half dome on the flat side there is a steep crevasse a cave uh, when you enter that it's just a, a network of natural tunnels as far as the dangers you might come across uh, Within the hold, I I could not say. The Svanir will be there, presumably with some ice brood warriors. On the journey, if you see uh, a frost worm or a thunderbird, I would hide. They don't normally attack something as small as we, but if they're hungry, you never know. Also, blizzards can form quickly in the high places if you find yourself in one find shelter quickly the last thing you want is to get separated from your group and lost in the snow snow drifts are definitely my concern she kind of like looks at you with a an expression of almost unexpected surprise and mm -hmm. she, she smiles like a very winning very warm smile uh, not not really expected from such a a sort of stern countenance but she nods and, this is understandable little one she yeah i'll be sad to leave our yak behind but uh if that's what we have to do she will be well taken care of she looks at you brina have you ever encountered one of the Coden before? Have I ever encountered one of the Coden before? No, I have not. <laughs> no. They are, and she, she kind of turns to the rest of the group, assuming Brina already knows this sort of basic information. Far to the north, where the Norn originated, Another culture of creatures existed. Some say long before the Norn came to be. We don't really know. They are the Coden. K-O-D-A-N. 
they are tall, taller even than we norn. Uh, eight, eight or nine feet usually, very strongly built, and they resemble the white snow bears. But they walk on two legs, and they speak as we. They worship a spirit that they call Koda, K-O-D-A. They are quiet, solitary creatures, mostly thoughtful. I would not cross them if you could avoid it. They are not cruel or wicked, but they do not suffer fools lightly. I don't know if there's any more advice I could give you except to be very careful. Always be on guard. Thank you for for sharing this information. We do. We will take any advice that you can give. Um, and at this point, there's one one little guy in kitchen scrubs comes out with a huge tray, and he sits it down in front of her. But it's it's a single single serving tray. But it's got this massive like. 15 ounce T-bone steak nice, and a big hefty baked potato and what looks like a silver goblet full of a very fragrant red wine. Just plops it down in front of her, doesn't say anything, just turns around and leaves. Like doesn't, doesn't nod, doesn't acknowledge her. Right. She just very slowly takes out some utensils and starts cutting it up. Just takes her dagger and like sticks a piece of the meat, just daggers it into her mouth. Delighted to introduce everyone to my new girlfriend. <laughs> 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 Fucking hate this thing. Yeah, you'll note the, the the strong differences from the previous girlfriend who was also ripped and authoritative. <laughs> Darn culture, baby. The brain and type, baby, yeah. <laughs> for my previous email. I love it though. I live a simple life. <laughs> <laughs> ripped women throwing rocks in river. That's all I need. Quite frankly, inspired by a true story. <laughs> <laughs> I would die happy if that was my to-do list. <laughs> hey um, She just says, uh, <laughs> Will, you all are welcome to set up camp in the courtyard, or there are bunks in the bunkhouse, should you need them. Otherwise, please enjoy your food and drink. Uh, the Lion Guard will cover the costs. There's no need to worry about that. Thank you. Have the Suns made any approach to this outpost at all? Or do they largely stay away? They have come a few times to boast and bluster. They often came in the past to recruit the strong Norn men who would be stationed here. We've run them off recently, but uh, every now and then we do, our scouts see them in the valley, presumably gathering information on which targets they plan to hit next. But we are pre prepared as best we can be, and we still maintain the road, so my job is done. Thank you. She just continues eating for a little bit, making chit chat. Uh, she she does know, uh, I believe, uh, Gareth, the Yakbinder stead. She knows Gareth and Signy. Nice. And yeah, you guys get fed and watered. Is there anything anyone would like to do in Twinspur Haven? Can I set up uh, my pavilion tent just outside of the gate? Would they let me do that? Outside of the gate? Or well, inside of the gate if I can is fine. But yes, they okay. they would prefer you to set it up inside the gate. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, there's there's plenty of space in the courtyard, like over by the walls. There are stacks of provisions and occasionally like little like sheds that have kind of been built to house mm. like grains and things like that. And there's plenty of space between some of them to set up a little tent like yours. Okay, Galatar will do that so you can practice some magic with Ibu. Nice. Okay. Uh, I want to ask someone where they get their maple glaze. Like, so. uh, you just uh, told you that mm. uh, it was from uh, a merchant caravan that they saved. They they gave yeah. you a couple. They they gave them a couple of crates or, mm. or barrels, you know, of this this special glaze. Are you asking where like, it came from? Yeah, like where oh. can we order more of this? Do you have to go boxes? Might we partake? Uh, like, do you have their business card or something? <laughs> Both those are common uh, practice. So y Irsa is gone. Yeah. But uh, the captain says, Ah, is the, the merchants who, wrong accent, the merchants who gave this to us, I believe it came from Smokestead. Although it might have been Butcher's Block. It's a, a, yeah, a yeah. town of Char to the east of here, down in the mm. lowlands, the DSL lowlands. Yeah, I've, I've heard of it. Butcher's, butcher's Block, yes. Mm. It's only a few days travel from the, uh, the Black Citadel. The, the home of your people, or at least one of them. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Do they have any kind of, like, Woodworking shop? Wood carving? They have a blacksmith. And there are some members of the guard who are more or less proficient with, with enough woodworking to be able to outfit and repair things like, you know, tools, hammers, halves, uh, pike staves, spears, and things like that. Is there not, anyone not who fine to pursue it? Oh, okay, it's, there's no one who pursues this in more of an artistic sense, then. Not at this. This is more of a military outpost. Okay. Is there any cool pieces of wood lying around? Anything kind of small I could like whittle at? I'm not really. It would just mostly be like kindling. You know, like just broken pieces of wood in the fire. But you're welcome to grab one and just whittle on it if you want. Sure, I'll wait to find something bigger when we go out into the woods tomorrow. Okay. After dinner, but while we're like winding down for the evening, away from other Lion Garden stuff, I would ask... Hey, Kala, when were you, when did you live in the Shiver Peaks? Uh, after I, you know, left home, but before I made it to Lion's Arch. A couple years. Did you, did you stay anywhere specific or just kick it? Uh, I just moved around the whole time, following the Lion Road, escorting people wherever they were going. Hopefully it, um, hopefully it treated you well. Uh, yeah, it was pretty good. I learned a lot of stuff. This is a good place to learn. Mm. So are we going to visit, the, assuming we live, let us put this out there. Um, are we going to visit your home after this? Uh, you mean where I'm from? That's probably not a good idea. They will I'm... kill you all on sight. Yeah, but like... <laughs> I 
big and thrive. So, so no to the, to the, yeah. okay, cool. Uh, yeah. Sounds you like- You don't really want to go home, right? Mm, not yet, no. Okay, I mean, well, I'm, I'm like, I think I'm wanted for murder there or something. So it's- It's understandable. You know, yeah. But if you ever do, I'll, you know, we'll go with you. Yeah. I think that is what I was trying to get at. Thank you, Owen. So that was beautifully said. Um, I, yeah. I mean, if I ever go back there, it's going to be to like murder a bunch of people. So oh. you, you might not want to sign be up balling. for that. I mean, the previous statement still stands. Right. I mean, we've murdered a lot of people together. Why change it? I mean, yeah. trust your judgment as well. You are nice mm. to Doliax and to us. So I'm assuming anyone you would want to kill is an asshole. So. I'm assuming yeah. this conversation does not happen at the dinner table. No, no this is later. <laughs> Paula would say that. Well, in the mess hall. Paula would say it with her chest, though. That's true. Yeah, I mean, I thought we were just still talking in the mess hall. Yeah. Because I'm looking an arched eyebrow from the captain. Um, yeah, she's still sitting there when we say this. I was assuming uh, this was later after the captain had kind of departed. We can jump cut. I mean, jump. murder well, might be not the Galator set up correct his tent technical and term. Looking for wood. But, like, we've killed a lot of human always. So, so I, I do, uh, kind of on the topic of Murder. Murder, murder, uh, you know, uh, aggression. I, I do want to uh, run a topic by you all uh, for this upcoming little journey. Um, so, Brina, you know the, the dreams I can do, uh, and and you know how I can can do that. Um, Very well, no. Is that what you guys were doing the other night? It no, it was like sex. Dreaming. It was wild sex. That's it was crazy. What it sounded sex. like. Yeah, no. yeah so so we've yeah brina brina and i have have done it a couple of times the dreams not the sex um it's, it's, it's a sizing sex issue dreams? it never work um anyways um <laughs> it's a size issue. <laughs> <laughs> um anyways um so i was wondering what you don't know brina is that i can i can turn those dreams uh, if I want into nightmares, uh, and I can, you know, keep people from getting rest and uh, really, really fuck them up in the head. Um, it is fucked up. And something I kind of want to run by you all is maybe over the next couple of days as we travel to fight this group. I wonder if I should be doing that to certain people in that group to make our, our job a little easier when we get there. So you, you want to like brother? psychologically torture my brother? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully exhaust him to the point that when we get there, he doesn't put up much of a fight. Well, if we do exhaust him enough, it may make it easier for us to be able to defeat him without having to hurt him, Brin. If he's too weak to fight us. But that's just him. What's about all the other people there? Well, they're not related to Brina. So I don't, I'm, you know, I'm like more worried. Murder ahoy. I, I feel like he's the, the strongest of them. He's uh, their leader, right? Yeah. He's kind of. Uh chosen currently it's not like a council kind of setup or no more of like a ancient primordial of dragon dictatorship and then just like my shitty brother did your so. brother just start with the group around the time they formed and became the leader or did he like start later and kind of rise to the ranks do you have any idea i mean they've been around a long time this group yeah they've they've been around they've just grown more and more prominent 
recently. Um, they're, you know, believe that Jormag is the peak of power, that dragon is greater than all the other spirits of the wild. And as a result, they break away from our home and our culture and pursue this gross individual lifestyle and they don't let any women join which like first of all I don't want to join second of all pretty misogynistic um but <laughs> what yeah um to answer your question he kind of just I mean we grew up and he started hanging out with some different people and I started doing my thing and we just kind of stopped talking. And so if it was a question of his family or his newfound one, he went with them and I guess found some success there. Well, maybe the dragon is just very persuasive with his influence. Perhaps if we are able to get him away, he may be able to make a recovery. He is very, very persuasive, but... Um, did you tell us about the whispers? I don't think I shared anything about the dream with you guys. Okay, yeah. I didn't mean to do it. And, I didn't mean to do it. Well, actually, now while we're talking about it, I oh, would probably. Cares. Well, get this right. So, <laughs> I had a dream. Oh, we don't remember. Okay. No, it's cool. You this was at the end of point. yeah last oh, okay. session. You were. Um, right. on the topic of you know psychological warfare. Um. When we were back at the Great Lodge, Bertie kind of launched me into Halvar's dreams, which was, you know, a lot of deep-seated trauma, kind of unpacking that, but it was cool. Um, and yes, I got to see my brother in his twisted form, but um, I didn't just talk to him. I also heard these whispers in this voice that was not his and wasn't really human. But in his dream. In his dream. But I don't think he always heard it as well. Hmm. Maybe yeah. there is something. He is corrupted. There is no doubt about that. And I would love to sever that bond, but I don't know how. And I don't know if it is even possible. But um, it does not take a scholar or a genius to deduce that this creepy voice is probably, you know, Jormana guy's dragon, big spooky guy. Or whoever is granting Alvar this power. And... Um, he was like, oh, hey, Brina, you should kill your brother and join me instead. And I was like, this is shitty. I hate this. <laughs> so, so he wanted you to kill your own brother who serves him so that you could serve him in his place? Yep. Was a really bad was effective, dream. effective, like, corporate power structure. Also, he, only, he only attracts young men. And he's suddenly willing to just throw it all away for a young lady. Well, I am a dashing, beautiful young woman. Yes, this is true. However, I do think it has more to do with um, kill the unworthy, take their place, and then the more powerful person. It's all about power. It keeps coming back to that. Who can wield it the best? Who is the strongest? Nothing else matters to them. And so, because I am a dainty lady, and she burps, <laughs> they wouldn't want anything to do with me anyway, which is fine by me, but <sighs> what a complex political structure. Tactic. Wait, what? Sorry. An interesting manipulative tactic. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. Um, if your brother has been branded or influenced to that point, I don't know that we could save him, but there's also not much to say that we can't. We just really don't know enough. So perhaps if we could get them away and maybe get them back to Lion's Arch or somewhere with a lot of magical expertise and things, people might be able to help him. We I have a know. lot of connections. We yeah. definitely could ask. He's um, 
I don't. I have the means to incapacitate him, as does Bertie. So, you know, there are ways for us to get him back safely. But I, I can't get him back safely. To... <laughs> Alexa, you just That's said why I said Bertie, not Alexa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just <laughs> throwing it out there. That, yeah, I can't help in that department. Well, yeah, certain people like, are shit, my spells are fire, fire, <laughs> and fire. Fuck, now I'm all out, dude. <laughs> Oh, um, Alexa can melt his icy heart. That's cute. Exactly. A nice fireball. I do. I don't want to kill my brother. I really don't want to do that. Yeah. But if it is a question of keeping you all safe at the expense of someone who is no longer who I thought he was. Then maybe we will see. Maybe we we'll will do our best not to put you in that position. And maybe, hopefully, we cross that bridge if we ever have to come to it. You, you, you know what? An if. You know what? I like this. I like this change of strategy, change of, change of, uh, you know, headspace. It's going to be fine. Okay. Right, what if? What if so, we go? Uh, skip over your brother and go for the whispery guy or girl. You know, I'm only level nine. I don't know if I can handle that. But like, um, mm. also, fuck it, we ball. I don't know. So it what is exactly fun. is our goal? Is it just to kill the whisper guy? Is it to take out basically everybody there? Like, what is what do we consider a victory? Right, I guess this isn't the only. The um, this isn't the only sons of. Um, no, it is Bonnier. not. Bonnier. Uh, I think what we said we were going to do is take care of just this outpost. You know. Yes. Not the whole problem. We were just hired for, you know, this, this one location. But does that mean killing all the people there? Are we supposed to deal with them that way? Is they just taking out the head guy? Like, what does that mean exactly, I if guess? It's all about the power structure. I assume taking out just one person in charge doesn't mean everyone else falls apart. I think it would just mean someone else rises to take that place. I think this is more about them as a whole, as a group, rather than just trying to go for Brina's brother just because he's the one in charge. annihilation. Well, I mean, I guess that's kind of what I'm asking. Do we, we have to just kill them? Is there... I have a feeling that why once would we, get we not? There, they'll make the choice very easy. Could we uh, put them under some sort of siege? Barricade them in their outpost? I mean, if we have to kill them, I understand them and I'm willing to do that. It's just, it seems that, like Brina's brother, probably all of these people have been manipulated and persuaded through rather forceful means to take up this way of life. This is true. But um, not everyone's as strong as Brina. If we had a means of mass, I just want to say I'm, I'm not talking. Condition. I'm not talking about you know psychologically ruining his evenings to kill him at the moment. No, no. I'm saying if we take him to the point death adjacent, you know, so, somewhere, somewhere in the middle ground where mm-hmm. he's so Are sleep sleep four? deprived. Uh-huh. You know, if we were to say like ex- if he had like certain ratings of exhaustion maybe like a three or a four yeah um you want to death adjacent my brother yes uh because you all are very big and and intimidate me and uh i don't think i'm very i think we lean away from that strategy i think honestly i don't hate it I think Dottie's plan's a good one. I just want to know what to do with everybody else. I think that, Kitri, you make a good point. We take out Halvor, be it by getting him out of there or whatever that comes to, but there just will be the opportunity for someone else to take his place. Yeah. Could 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 we put them under some sort of siege? I want to bring this idea up again. If there's some uh, way we could barricade them in, you mean just like I don't think we have this. the yeah oh. I don't think we have the manpower and the resources. Uh, it's funny. There's me nine through. levels and I can do it. <laughs> it is a network of caves. It's not just one entrance and one exit. I imagine that they have 
you know, centuries worth of stonework. That's very true. We there. are going to be in the mountains. Also, if our goal is to just get rid of everybody and kind of take them out, do you just want to go on guns blazing or for just trying to get Talvar and maybe wreck some things, do we want to try to be sneaky? How do we even want to like approach that sort of the thing that I'm most curious about, you know? And once we're in, how will we know where to go? I mean, assuming again that this is a large we have multiple scouts. Yeah, you and Kola are very good at scouting. We've got Ibu. I mean, part of the I've reason I want to ask spell I haven't tried. this now is because she said they have scouts in the area. So, I, you know, moving forward, we're going to have to either deal with those scouts as we go or just try to avoid them. I think that as we approach, we should be as inconspicuous as possible. Okay. Try and stay out of the way of any of their scouts, as well as, you know, uh, ice worms and the thunderbirds. The ice worms are a bitch, guys. I don't want to touch that. Um, magic, get, magic, yeah, magic. magic. But also big worm. But what can you big do with the magic worm. eggs exactly? Big worm, what magic can you do with an Anyways. ice magic egg. I, I don't you know. Eat I, them, right? I haven't studied I mean, them. Yeah. Probably tasty. Next. Um, did the DM allude to us getting some magic items while we were here before? For some of those potions we found to make? I believe you guys... <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> ...of a recipe for making potions of resistance. Never mind, let's mm. find ice worms. I'm uh, all on uh, board. I forgot. I don't know anything about magic. I paid 400 gold pieces for two fucking regular <laughs> healing potions, so I'm going to leave that up to you guys. And yet right. she speaks to Daisy regularly. <laughs> that's, that's a different kind of magic. That's this Brina, kind of magic. Make a history check for me. Oh, baby. See how close Ooh. you You listened to the skalds as you grew up. History. Hmm. Okay. 13. You also know that, I mean, some of the greatest legendary uh, objects in, in history, w wielded by history's greatest heroes, were forged with magical components, much like spellcasting, that are intrinsic to, to creating items of impressive stature. All right. Maybe we don't go seeking All them right. out. We don't. We but don't, we don't not seek them. If we happen to stumble upon giant ice worm and we can kill giant ice worm and get magic sword. If we could just like side dead. quest a day to pick up items, if we I mean, find, if we find uh, them, you know? Like, if one flies over the head, them. I'm going to be a little distracted. Um, that is, I'm cool with that. Also, it's, we could, after we deal with the whole sun's thing, potentially just go worm hunting. I mean, they're not going anywhere. That's a really good point. So let's prioritize the sons of v Vermeer. Vermeer. <laughs> sons of Cormier. The sons of Cormier. Vermeer. Vermeer. No, keep going. Vermeer. Vermeer. Bunny ears. Bunny. That's what I have. <laughs> I forgot you in that I one. I know. I hate remembering it. I fucking. I I'm now I'm imagining so you on that giant yak just wearing a onesie. This is great. It was so white and white it's too. Also a black cloak. So when the hood's down and the cloak is over it, like it's, it's like nice. the fucking rabbit and the it's magician's hat. Mm, in my brain, it's oh, like man. bunny snowsuit meets Donnie Darko, and I'm not happy even a little. Oh, no, it's bit Christmas happy. story meets Donnie Darko. Mm, absolutely. That's my, in my notes, what I have it written as. Yeah. I hate it. I do hate it. Um, yeah. Why are you wearing that man suit? <laughs> I want to watch that movie again. Oh, um, you too, so bad. Oh. As far as getting in the caves goes, we are no doubt at the disadvantage. I mean, we don't fucking know anything. We're not going to know anything until we get there. I think that the goal should be to <laughs> quiet to or loud. Quiet. I would like to find Halvar and try and get him out. I would like to not have to kill my brother, but I would like for him to be out one way or another. I think that him not being there would at the very least destabilize the sons for long enough 
but they have to figure out what the fuck is next. Okay, I think that's fair. So should we have Bertie go ahead and start targeting your brother tonight? How many days will it take to get there from here? Um, it's like, like four four four-ish. Four-ish. Maybe three or four. So if you, well, you don't stop know if tonight, you could probably put them in a pretty precarious position by the time I arrive without killing him. That's what I'm thinking. Mm. And frankly, it would give me or birthday if you would like to. It might be nice to take a bit of a breather. A better insight into where he is at in his yeah, Bertie, have a little chat with him. Yeah, Bertie, come visit my family. Doesn't work so much like that. If I turn it into a nightmare, I, I only get a brief moment to actually talk to him. Uh, I could just have a chat with him if we want. Could be fun. I I mean, that's up to you, Bertie. I, I don't know what I'm going to get that Brina wouldn't. Uh, so Maybe I, a I, recruitment pitch. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> You make excellent yeah. candidates. Give him a, a dream sense. birthday card. Or birthday, a business card. Business card. <laughs> okay. This is fun. Let's cope with humor. <laughs> yes. It'll be all right, Brina. We will do our best. I know. And um, thank, thank you guys for being here. This is not good or fun or cool adventure. Unless we get ice warm egg, then it's, it is back to being pretty cool. But... Um, hmm. This is dangerous and scary and not ideal. So thank you for coming and staying. We'll see you through to the end together, all six of us. And Daisy. And Daisy. And the Biscuit. I pulled Biscuit <laughs> out of my seat of that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wow. Biscuit! <laughs> no. Um I would also like to request a brief bio break if that can be arranged. Yeah, if, if you guys are done talking for the night, uh is there gonna be a dream spell cast tonight? All right, we, can we do that when that we get when back we from the break. Come back from the break. Yep, exactly. Is it take, a dream or a night? Take five bio break. Can we take ten dream. for the bio break? Oh, a beautiful so I also need to grab some food because I am starving. I am also starving. Not gonna sure. lie. If, I have if, a mother. If everybody else gets back in five minutes, we'll just do the yeah, here, Jimmy. Thing, you guys don't have to interact. And we are recording this. Okay. Oh, so. Wrong power. Right. Uh, but yeah, yeah, take take the time you need.